Well, we find ourselves back here in Blessed Ambrose Barlow on a cold, rather foggy Friday morning in March. With me, usual suspects, Paul Tremarco. Hello, Paul. Hi, you know, Eddie. And, of course, the director that, that is Edward McCormick. Which is here. Yeah, They'll make it extraordinary. But listen, guys, yeah, as I say, we're here on this uh, Friday morning, middle of uh, March. Now, we've had news today that come May, the latest, the demolition people are going to be coming in and knocking this fine building down. Now, what's your thoughts? That's ironic, that, uh, because in May, it's 40 years, it'll be 40 years to the day that I walked out of the school. Really? My last day was May 1974, and on May 2014 is the day it's going to be yeah. bulldozed. It's almost it's, like a, it's, an extreme form of synchronicity. It, it makes the, the ears tingle back. I mean, you can imagine, yeah. Back when I think the great ears tingle on the back of my The great ears tingle on the back of my head. I'm going to ask you a couple of pertinent questions in a minute, but just being here this morning, this, I've been here twice now. I wasn't a pupil at the school, obviously you two guys were, but every time I come here, you get a certain sense of, I don't know, how can I describe it, long ago past moments with all you pupils, and obviously holds a lot of memories for you two guys. Yeah. Well, well it's, it's about, say, um, it must be about five years of our lives, you know, we were here. I, I was here from about 1977, so I think it was 1982. Um, the thing is about coming back to a place like this, a lot of people go to school, I absolutely hate the experience. I think it was a bit of a mix for me. You know, you, you, you were there, you know, you get bullied and you do your games or whatever, you know, but um, it, it holds a special place for me because obviously these are like the informative years of your life. You know what I mean? Your teachers, you be friends a lot of them, you know, you know, I was into art and that's probably what's brought me back here because, you know, making these films and stuff and um, it shapes your life. I mean, you know, it's, I think you take advantage of what you can when you're here. I mean, I'm here today, I have to say, I today. Take on board what you're saying there, but I'm here today as a sort of outsider, I've come along for the ride sort of thing. But I'm, I'm watching you two guys closely, as I say, your former pupils, and the sense of excitement you're getting this morning and see it, and especially so because we know that it's not going to be here for that much longer. Oh, you're here for five years, and when you, when you, when you arrive when you're 11, and you leave when you're 16, you, as you, um, you can imagine, you're, you think you're a big fish in a, in a small pond until you're really outside and you realise. You get into a big wild world and you are a small fish and you're a massive pond. And five years then was a long time, but you know, 45 years ago to the day that we started, and 40 years ago for me personally, that it's closed down. It's a long time in your life. It's over a lifetime, I think. That's right. And if, it's the same before that, if people watching this video in 50 years' time, or 100 years' time, whatever that may be, you know, it'll be so dated and, and everything. It'll be interesting to see what they think of the way we are today. That's right. That's a good point you make, Paul, because that what you're doing today, you guys, is basically capturing social history. That's what we talked about. We made a series of ten social history documentaries last year, yeah. including this particular. I think this was episode six or something like that, correct me if I'm wrong, but we visited this place, I think it was in August last year, Now we've gone through an autumn and a winter, now we're into almost spring, and, and you know, and the mere fact nothing's changed, but you being a filmmaker, you're capturing this, as Paul said, for life. So what we're doing this morning is going to etch in everyone's memory for a long, long time. Well, I hope so. People will look back, and, you know, and hopefully they'll look back at what we've done, like today on the series we did. With fondness as well, you know, because it's um, it's a lot of great memories for people, you know. Like I said, a lot of people may not have had good memories at school, but you know, for me personally, 
you know, it's, it, I, I don't think, I defy anyone to not come back here and have some fondness for what they've seen like we've seen today. Well, you know, regardless of any experiences with not enjoying the, you know, the school dinners or teachers or whatever, getting the cane, it's still a great place to come back to. But as we said, sadly, this is the last chance now. Of course, and in terms of history, Paul, you look on these websites, there's an awful lot of them these days, the new technology, you look on things like Facebook and all social history sites, and the images captured by, I call them history makers of the past, without those people, we would not have been able to look back with fondness and enjoyment and, you know, reminiscing about, wow, look at that, do you remember that street there? Do you remember that school there? So this is important what we're doing, isn't it? Yeah, well, the thing is, in 50 years' time, this will be whatever it is. But people will have, the, have, a, have a, a small snapshot of what it was like in, like, in 2014, because in 2067, or whatever it may be, you know, at the end of the century, they'll think, oh God, that was, is that what that place was like? Because you know, when we look at photographs now of the 1930s, our streets, and think, oh, have things changed? But then you can still. Look and think, well, that's still there. Yeah, of course. Yes. Yeah. History didn't stop in 1930, for example. It, it's carrying on now, yeah. as you say, in 2014. So a lot of grandkids and great grandkids say, oh, there's me Uncle Eddie, or there's me Granddad Eddie, or whatever, or Paul, or Eddie, you know what I'm saying? And so it's great being here. You're great, great chance. Can look at this now? You could be good. God, don't I look like that? Yeah. I know. <laughs> ugly, ugly, ugly. <laughs> what's, what's quite surreal about it now is that what we're filming today, just in the present now, where we're standing now will probably be trouble in about could be a month, could be two months now. That's right. We should be standing in a pile of rubble. I know. Well, at the risk, the danger of getting you all emotionally, guys, you former people, and I'll say, give us some final thoughts. Your last day, probably, that you have spent in the school today. It's a sad day for me. Um, but on the historical point, um, I'm so proud to be here now to be able to make this documentary and I'm. I'm, I'm, I'm be a part of the history, you know, and that's my legacy for this school is that I was part of the school, it's no longer here at the school now, but it was, and it was a good time in my life, a very happy time, um, so for good and some for bad, but um, it'll be gone, and I'll be long gone when this film's been shown to people, but at least I'll have my legacy being able to sit around and say, well, I did my bit, mm -hmm. to say, well, best than having borrowed, or six hours borrowed, whichever you want to call it. In the history books. Okay. Well, like rather like uh, listen to Paul here, as I mean, I've known you a long time, and yeah. obviously I've heard your tales about this school. It sounds like a school that I would have loved to put. Give us your final thoughts. Yeah, well, um, it's, you know, to make it extra special for me, actually, where we're standing right now was a very important part to me because, you know, I, I was involved with the school in Panto, I think it was in 1981. Um, I volunteered to do the, like, the lighting sound effects. Um, I don't know why I did it, I just did I don't think I wanted to go on stage and act and everything. Um, that's a result of that. I've just it's been a bit of a hobby over the years, sort of making films, um, you know, just like editing stuff, you know, becoming a DJ out of it all, anything creative. And it literally all started right behind where we are now, behind this door, which is the hall of you know anyone's watching. Eddie being modest by the way, he's probably the world's second biggest collector of Jaws memorabilia as well. Oh, and that as well, yeah. Well, I say that for a reason because you've got involved with filming and that sort of uh, yeah, as well, um, yeah, yeah, you know, I've become a fan of that over the years. Um, even ended up on the Blu-ray of the movie, would you believe? Mm -hmm. So, um, so from Little Acorns draw on the stage of uh, at Lesson Ambrose. That's right, yeah. yeah. Well, 30 odd years ago. Yeah, it's weird to think that the movie had been out like two years when I actually started the school. Yeah. So, uh, but time doesn't stay still. So, uh, it's good to be back, but it's going to be sad to see it go as well. And you can't stand, you can't stop the um, oh, progress. Progress, you can't stop progress.